welcome to Talk With Me. Jargal Saigen, otherwise known as Jargal de facto, is a renowned economist, author, and independent media representative in Mongolia. He is the host of one of Mongolia's most popular TV and radio programs, de facto. Jarko Sahin, welcome to you. Thank you very much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Um, we met many months ago, and I asked you to come on my show over lunch. And uh, today, happy I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm more happy. Thank you for uh, coming on today. Now, Jarko, you have a, a very popular, one of Mongolia's most popular talk shows that I'm a very big fan of, called De Facto TV and Radio. Uh, my, my favorite episode is the one you did with. Jack Weatherford. Uh, I love all the ones you do in English, but I'm curious. I want to ask you what has been your favorite episode of your de facto program? Um, I agree with Jack Weatherford and also Dalai Lama. Yes. And I also interviewed a lady, a young blind lady, mm -hmm. a Mongolian who had done accomplished university in the U.S., mm -hmm. speaks perfect English. And when I asked her, what is the most important thing in life? She said, probably a goal. Mm -hmm. The rest is technical. Mm -hmm. That was such answer that I couldn't talk anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that time, how many people who has normal eyes, normal everything, yeah. would say that, isn't it? So sometimes you are gobsmacked and you are speechless when you hear responses like that? Uh, you know, I like more and more this job because with, thanks to this work I have been, I have a great chance to meet, to meet people which, uh, whom maybe otherwise I would not meet. Mm -hmm. Presidents, kings, queens, mm -hmm. and princesses or very famous people or people who otherwise make impact on the way we live, maybe potentially also can impact. Mm -hmm. And I try also to uh, inspire people, in particular in Mongolia, young people who are just starting their political career maybe, mm -hmm. so that they have certain achieved certain things. Yeah. That's why I, I enjoy this program. Yeah, well I, I enjoy it very much too. Chaco, I want to ask you, are there any people you would never have back on your show. Can you tell me about some difficult interviews you've done that it may not have gone according to plan? Oh, it, it, the times it goes a lot. Really? <laughs> because in particular with the politicians, I ask questions they otherwise would not expect. Mm -hmm. So I usually ask uh, before I go to anything you don't want me to ask. Mm -hmm. Usually say no. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I go ahead and I said, look, I ask you the questions. Of course, it's uncomfortable. Uh, the, you see, this interview comes along with my article I write every week in mm -hmm. Mongolian and in English. Mm -hmm. I write first in Mongolian on uh, that week current political, economic, social, hot issues. Mm -hmm. Then translate in four days into English. Mm -hmm. And I have a young man helping me, Amar, and um, <coughs> translating into English. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, you see, not only inside of Mongolia, but outside of mm -hmm. Mongolia, English-speaking people can see what's happening in Mongolia by the eyes of a Mongolian who is also, along with other people, going through all these changes. Yes. And uh, because these uh, articles go, it keeps me very update on the current situation in the country mm -hmm. and I strongly believe that uh, the politicians, the political system in this country must be transparent. Mm -hmm. That's where we are missing. Yes. So uh, that's why I ask questions that of course politicians they have to answer with me or with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because these are the issues we want answer, clear cut you know, straight uh, statement by that politicians. Yes. Not easy. Not easy. Is there anybody you've, you've asked to be on your show who has never been on? Who do you who do you really want on your show that you haven't interviewed? Hmm. Of 
course I would like to ask several questions on uh, people, I mean global leaders mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, religious leaders mm -hmm. and of course uh, some maybe actor mm -hmm. who otherwise you know is rep representing the current challenges of our society you know you see I see Mongolia more global I don't see Mongolia as Mongolia today right uh, I see it's just a part of big world and it's interconnected mm -hmm. as the world change we go with that and uh, particularly because it's a young country I would like to interview people who can impact on the way the people think. Mm -hmm. Google, uh, name it Facebook, Twitter, I would yes. like to, who created these yeah. modern tools. Um, listen, getting on to Twitter, you've got close to 90,000 Twitter followers, you're very influential, uh, more Twitter followers than many politicians, than most politicians. Why do you think you have this appeal in Mongolia? What is it about you? that people admire and uh, want to know so much about you and what you think, see, why? See, uh, Twitter is such a tool that can empower a country like Mongolia even, mm -hmm. along with the country like US, for example, Australia. The same access, same opportunity, the same uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. So we address the issues where we need social mobilization. Mm -hmm on Twitter and I uh, react on certain issues, I react on the tweets of somebody else Yeah. so that, y you know, uh, I do it because I'm, a, I'm not a member of any political party, any organization, you know. Mm -hmm. I have the highest position today in my life is a, is a husband of my wife, so mm. the, she's the only person who may fire me, so she's the <laughs> hopefully, boss, not, yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. No, what I mean is, in media, it's easier to work when you don't belong to some political parties or big business groups, etc. And you can uh, react as professional. If, you, if this is a sub particular subject that you uh, somehow studied or you were working, mm -hmm. it uh, feels me, it makes me, you know, obliged. You know, I should do it. Yeah. Listen, you're not a member of any political party then? No. no. Do you have political aspirations? Of course. Will we see you in the 2016 uh, elections no. running for oh, any... You mean in my mind? Yeah, my yeah. Oh. No. Never? No, because oh, I will run only for one case. If Ulaanbaatar city, the capital city of Mongolia, which has a half of the population, yeah. can elect on mayor directly, which is not the case. Our mayor is approved by the prime minister mm -hmm. and elected by the uh, Hural representatives, mm -hmm. Hural at, at the city level. Mm -hmm. So I think Ulaanbaatar city people must have a chance to vote for their own mayor mm -hmm. from the citizens. In yeah. the, if this is the case, then I will run. You know why? Why? Because I, am, I was born in the outskirts of Ulaanbaatar. Mm -hmm. Okay, my, where I was born, now it's an uh, urbanized place. Okay, where? where? Near this is, no, this is nearby a White House, the restaurant. Oh, it I was when I was born. It, yeah, it was the streets. Yeah. Just just regular Gary streets, like outside we have. And uh, my uh, father and mother are blue-color workers. Mm -hmm. And I remember how difficult it was to take, bring water, mm -hmm. to prepare woods, and to bring coal to fire. And yet we were doing it because probably, you know, the children, you don't know otherwise how do people leave. You do the job, then you do your homework. Yeah. And it's cold in the morning. And today I'm thinking, you see, after now how many years, okay, I, I was, I myself was uh, lucky, I studied and I got education, I lived, traveled. Mm -hmm. But now today I'm asking a question, why these children have the same situation today? Mm -hmm. Today, 2015, yeah. why half of Ulaanbaatar people still live in this area where minimum sanitation is not there? Mm -hmm. That's the question, and I, we must reply to, we must answer these questions. Mm -hmm. And we are not doing it sufficiently. Mm -hmm. Now people tend to forget that, where we were before. 
That's right. If you don't make change, who will do this change? Yeah. That's so you're saying maybe in, in a way we haven't we haven't come very far in Nubia is what you're saying, mm. and things should be better. Yep. That's why we need to get these people with at least minimal conditions. Mm. Probably running water. We need waste management, yep. heating system, yes. so these people live better. Yes, I agree. I, I agree with you 100%. Now, Jago, last week you were a panel member at World Press Freedom Day, uh, and you've said in the past, what's happening today in our media in Mongolia is a reflection of our democracy. Do you think in Mongolia we have free speech? And tell me a little bit about your involvement with this panel. See, <laughs> well, I'm being invited now to many panels, and somehow probably I have certain supporters, followers who support what I say independently from politicians mm -hmm. and try to evaluate as much as possible professionally current economic and social situations. Mm -hmm. And you asked me about uh, how do we have a freedom of speech. This country, yes, we do. But it's very interesting because I see now Mongolia democracy as a process. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you know, I, I interviewed the OCS uh, lady, uh, a pre media representative, mm -hmm. uh, Dunia Mjatkovic. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, in Mongolia there is no journalist arrested or restricted or put into prison, etc. And there was a couple cases when this Twitter followers, What about et that engineer? Yes. With the in you see, uh, that engineer, and there was another uh, case when this Amjilt dot MN website was closed yes. because it was Han talking Jims. about the yeah, Han Jims were former Prime Minister uh, uh, campus. Yeah. And Altan Huyag shut them down. Yes, it is. I mean, indirectly or directly. So that really whatever. isn't free speech. Yeah, so that's why we, we want to have that free speech. Uh, I'm saying it is, yes, there, because uh, compared to other countries, cases in particular neighbor countries, it is. And we have a lot of media outlets, as you know, mm -hmm. per hour, thousand outlets for three million people. So, and on, on one hand, it says that there is a freedom of speech, there is opportunity for people to speak. Mm -hmm. But, mm, uh, media itself, should be independent completely, mm. which is not the case because exactly. outlets, media outlets, are belong to political party representatives of the party or uh, bigger groups that support the party, etc. You know this current situation, and we try to improve. And now there is a big discussion: should we have uh, media law or not? For example, because if the government do too much, they are restricting too much. Mm -hmm. Law, whatever, or maybe self-regulatory things. You know, where journalists have certain code of conduct mm -hmm. and certain ethical sort of selection being uh, f filtering itself. Mm -hmm. So that's the situation I think in the country. And um, so, in a way, I cannot say that there is no freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. But in occasionally, the case, these sort of cases, we fight, we take. Mm -hmm. And we all journalists together, no, nobody can stop it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Listen, who are your critics? And what do you say to your critics? And uh, I mean, it. Mm. You see, <clears throat> I, I believe in market more than in the government. Mm -hmm. And people for years who used to have free benefits. Mm -hmm. They want to have more and more government. They promote government. They demand strong leadership. Mm -hmm. Some somebody, you know, coming not leadership, a leader, mm -hmm. which I oppose because in economy, in a lot of issues, more market should be arranged. Because initially that's tough, mm -hmm. but slowly that's sure instruments to regulate. Mm -hmm. Mongolian economic crisis is not as such economic, because of economics. Mm -hmm. It's because of politicians. That's why we have so much frequency in our uh, crisis. Yes. Inflation, the result of bad political actions. Mm -hmm. So because 
that my position, I have a lot of critics saying that you imperialist, you know, whatever, you know, they use and they attack you on yeah. online. And I think in the world, like uh, open a website, uh, if one third is attacking you, you are fine. It's okay. One third is fine. Do you ever get s scared though? I mean, Mongolia can be a bit dangerous. You speak in your mind. You're very, very blunt in your articles and the way you speak. Do you ever get worried about getting on the wrong side of people? You ever have to watch your back? Yeah. Well, there's not half truth mm -hmm. or full truth. There's one. Mm -hmm. You say it. Then after you will see. So you're not, you, you don't get worried about getting on the wrong side of people? Yeah, there is, but however, look, you are there. Yeah. You are there. We, we say, if you are afraid, don't go to forest. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. if, if you are in a forest, don't be afraid. Uh -huh. So that's our I Mongolian like that. proverb. Is that a Mongolian proverb? Yeah. Will you say it to me in Mongolian? Um, yeah, no. Thank you. <laughs> I love learning uh, new proverbs, and I, I particularly like that one. You are getting better and better with I am. your Mongolian. I'm trying, I'm trying. I want to learn that one, though. Jaco, you were in banking and finance for many years. Why did you give up your career in banking and finance to become a political commentator, journalist, start a TV and radio show? Uh, why? Um, 2009. Mm -hmm. I thought we need some sort of critical review of current situations from non-political, non from independent view. So I decided to write on the issues and the UNODUR newspaper like it. They asked me to write every week. I said, every week? Yes, because your column must be every week, not every two weeks or This is month. how I met you three years yes. ago. <laughs> so I decided to write and I, I keep writing and and then uh, after a year or so, I was told, look, not everybody reads in this country newspaper, you should be on TV. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, I cannot do the same what a newspaper I do with. Uh, so I decided to ask questions with the people who may have a decision, the impact on the way we live. Mm -hmm. So then I started, by the way, my first guest was a Parakana, the US um, economic policy analyst. Mm -hmm. At traveling to Mongolia, and by the way, it's almost by chance I started to make this TV program because a friend asked me, please interview that guy. Mm -hmm. Why I should do it? I mean, plus I'm not a TV man. He, they said, no, don't worry. We will arrange it. Just go and ask the questions. Uh -huh. What questions? Because this is the guy who, said, who called Mongolia as a Mongolia. Oh, First, he coined see, the expression. Interesting. He wrote a book, Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started my media things. Um, why I have changed completely uh, was why well, I, I was you know I was a head of a large leasing company mm -hmm. before I was a, a CEO of a commercial bank, mm -hmm. and I doing the job, keep writing, and then uh, the uh, shareholders one day asked me, "Come, Jaga, you do one of these jobs. Why? I'm doing very successful at the job. Mm -hmm. It's not at the cost of each other. Mm -hmm. As you see, this company is getting very well." He said, "Yes, but however." However, you are more known as de facto than the head of my company. <laughs> All right, okay, so what time? A month? I said yes. Okay. So it was, I think, a month. Where do I go? Mm -hmm. At that time, I had already a lot audience, large audience, followers, and mm -hmm. it was hard for me to just say bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Cannot. Yeah. So I was thinking and I was very much supported by my wife, mm -hmm. who is always inspiring and support to me, who gave the name de facto, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, oh, look, we should follow what our heart says. Mm -hmm. So I did. Good. So I go and I go. And <laughs> hopefully, you know, what you do, what I do, uh, giving people thoughts mm -hmm. that help them to make better decisions, and improve their life separately and all together improve this country. Mm. At least when you know when you feel this, it's good. Mm. It makes me happy. Yes, me too. I <laughs> I understand what you're talking about. Um, 
So you have an MBA from the University of Denver, yes. Colorado. You've also studied economics in Russia. What is it that you learned overseas, perhaps in the U.S. in Russia, that you weren't able to learn in Mongolia? Uh, what was uh, well, you see? Of course, the education system in this country allowed to improve, mm -hmm. in particular to meet market demand. Mm -hmm. In particular, the level of Tuwait technical vocational training level. Uh, at the time when I was sent to uh, Russia, mm -hmm. the best students were sent to Russia, mm -hmm. and I am very lucky to do the best university available at that time for all socialist countries, mm -hmm. which was the Moscow State University, and I have graduated with that university with honors studying wow. socialist economy, etc. And I come back, I was a part of all this change. Mm -hmm. So half of my life with the old system, mm -hmm. another half is with the new system. Mm -hmm. And I had an opportunity to uh, let on to have my MBA, mm -hmm. and I got a U.S. Ed scholarship. So I'm uh, lucky to have this, and I have done the University of Denver, mm -hmm. where I was uh, 10 days ago, gave a lecture at the, uh, in Denver about uh, 25 years of transitions of Mongolia. Oh. Lessons and opportunities. Is that lecture in English? It is in, on my website. Oh, good. I'm, I'm going to uh, find that. Uh, because you see, 25 years is in demographic. Demography, it's uh, one generation. Mm, it's nothing. And uh, on one side. On the other side, uh, one, 25 years is some time that you can look at back and you see what you have done, mm -hmm. what was your original plan, what you have done today, and what to follow. Mm -hmm. In that way, I think. You know, this year we're going to celebrate 25 years of democracy in this country, democratic revolution. But along with this whole celebrations, party, you know, praising, mm -hmm. we should now look at critically mm -hmm. at what happened. Seriously. And then, you know, everybody, you cannot cheat yourself, right? So the society does so. We should discuss what we could do, mm -hmm. what we could do better. So I think I would like to contribute to this part of mm. thinking. Right, of course. Now listen, Drago, there are many things we, we learn overseas and uh, people bring this knowledge back to Mongolia. What is something that we can learn from Mongolia that we can't learn overseas? I mean, there's so many positive things about this country. What can Mongolia teach the world? You see, uh, uh, very interesting that you asked me this question. I came up with this question in bed last night. I thought the I reason better, better write that one down. <laughs> the reason is, I, the reason I write, mm -hmm. also uh, translate into uh, English is, mm -hmm. what's happening in Mongolia? Mm -hmm. These procedures, economic, political, social, uh, simultaneous trans, uh, transition, mm -hmm. are going to happen in many countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And humans, human is human. And they will go through all these challenges, constitutional democracy, the, what happens if you do this and that amendment in your constitution, what does that mean that if you have part, you, your legislators are also cabinet members, mm -hmm. what kind of conflicts of interests are there, mm -hmm. should you avoid it, and how do we need the transparency, mm -hmm. how to watch the political parties, where the money comes from for the political parties, these are the questions Every country, uh, remember, half of the, uh, I mean, two-thirds of the world are still poor. They have to go ahead through all this transition sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And one day, they will study Mongolia. And I sort of, what I write is chronological order, all these issues. I know. I, I love, sorry. I'm glad they're in chronological order. And that's uh, an you know, excellent I, I, answer. I put, I mean, one day, Mongolia will be an example to the world about. In a way. For example, we receive a lot of delegates from Myanmar, mm -hmm. Kyrgyzstan, mm -hmm. and they are coming and learning. Mm -hmm. Because for them it's closer and easier to come here rather than to go to the U.S. to study what's going on. So I, I interviewed the, mm, the political the advisor, the first advisor of President of Myanmar, Mr. Cole on my program de facto, which is on, 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 on my website now. Yeah, uh, that was his impression, and he told me, he asked me, well, he was uh, rather interviewing me than <laughs> myself. Interesting. <laughs> I'm, this interview is in English? Yes. Okay, this, this is one this, I watched uh, tonight. Uh, there are many other similar interviews. Mm -hmm. And you see, 
the world is becoming one and global and one and one with this current technology you know in the morning we see the same news we have the same happiness or same pain the airplane in Alps you know, sorrow you know people sorrow you have everybody all around the world they feel very sorry for very big sorrow or then something good happening yesterday the pop was playing with uh, well, football with his finger. Yeah. Fantastic. Or the birth of a royal baby. Oh, yeah. Yes. See, we celebrate, we enjoy, we all. So that, that makes us one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that world, IT, all this, is a good tools for us to improve ourselves. And you were talking also education. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that Mongolians are coming back. Yeah. And I'm so happy that so many Mongolians are traveling. Why? Because remember Akio Morita, the founder of Sony, he said two ways to get education. One sitting, the other is traveling. So the Mongols are getting and traveling and getting. Yes. And, and you can see that because in the city of Ulaanbaatar, you see the Korean type of small businesses or Japanese type of magazines, mm -hmm. and American type of names. Mm -hmm. So that means we are becoming global. Whether we like or not. Yes, exactly. It's a very international city, UB. I'm glad that this finally, but still, the half of the population ha must have a good sanitation. I agree. I agree. Jago, several months ago, you interviewed His Holiness the Dalai Lama, um, and you went on to write an article that I read, and it was a very good article called Mongolia's Great Spiritual Shift, summarizing his teachings and also applying them to Mongolia. And you, you also speak a lot about Buddha. Are you a Buddhist? Are you a particularly religious See, uh, man? When the, usually they ask this question, uh, question every Mongolian, they say, yes, we are Buddhist. Mm -hmm. You know what happened? It turned out we are not. We are atheists, you know. Yes. Okay, our maybe two generations ahead, they were Buddhists. And the 70 years of communism, socialism, made as atheists. Mm -hmm. We are not afraid of any God, any hell, you know, any... That's what's, uh, what, what is made with our spiritual life. Today I thought, when I was going to India to meet His Holiness Dalai Lama, I was suddenly thinking that, hey, we are not only doing economic and political transition, mm -hmm. we are doing a great spiritual from nowhere to somewhere, and we don't know where. Mm -hmm. That's why this the whole idea is spirit, spirits of nation, spirits of a person, mm -hmm. are either filled with religion or with knowledge. Mm -hmm. In some cases combined, but in some cases separate each other from each other. And I thought for Mongolian, for Mongolia, the country, for people, we fill this gap with knowledge, mm -hmm. deep knowledge, which we call it enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dalai Lama said one excellent thing that Buddhism, you know, there's Kanjur, Danjur, two series of volumes of books, 300 volumes. Mm -hmm. And they do now they divide into three categories, all teachings there. One, um, science natural science, second philosophy, the third is religion. Mm -hmm. And the natural science one is they say, very good for teaching even the science for children because this, that much detailed description is there. Mm -hmm. Philosophy, that's the spirituality we want to find. Mm -hmm. And I think if it is translated like this to, into, in, into our modern Mongolian language, mm -hmm. that would be a big, big, I think, uh, a step towards making Mongolia more spiritual. First, second, and I suggest our Gandans, our old Lamas, mm. to translate all what they read, mm -hmm. which is on, you know, it's in Tibetan mm -hmm. language. So when people go to a temple, they don't understand what the Lama reads. Mm -hmm. So I ask the Dalai Lama, wouldn't it be a Oh, great if we have it in Mongolia. He said, of course you should do it. Already, he said. So I think Mongolian Lama, Mongolian temp Buddhist temples need to translate. And 
the lamas themselves to be sort of uh, the people that people really respect and believe in what they say. Mm -hmm. And I think this big reform in our religion with the increasing knowledge mm -hmm. will make Mongolia better mm -hmm. because economic, as Dalai Lama said, your outside world is fine, he said. Of course there is ups and downs, mm -hmm. but inside world, we need peace with ourselves, mm -hmm. individually and collectively. Yeah. That's where we are now, I think. Fascinating. I love that interview. What was it like meeting him? Was it, was it the first time you'd met him? Uh, second time, but uh, first just, just, just say hello, yeah. almost. But it was a long-arranged interview, of course, mm -hmm. not yet very easy. But the, his assistant said, hey, he was not giving interview more than, like, uh, more than 20 minutes. He's talking to you 20, uh, 46 minutes, <laughs> a lot. He said, uh, yes, thank you, I'm very blessed. Meeting him, you know, I met somebody hard to call. Just, uh, it was so modest, mm -hmm. yet so spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I think not in vain we call him a li living uh, God. Mm -hmm. uh, very inspirational. Mm -hmm. You know, you meet somebody, people, you know, very modest, mm -hmm. very to the ground, mm -hmm. to the, and yet very powerful. Yeah. That was his message, and I felt fantastic. And yeah. also I, I ask us the sort of questions, by the way, it is in, in English and Mongolian, both on my website, jargaldefacto.com. Like, you know, I was feeling that I am in this position representing all my Mongolians. Mm -hmm. So I was asking the questions that give us a lot. Interesting. Um, you know, Jago, there's so many questions I have wanted to ask you over the past few years. And I told a lot of my friends I'm finally getting Jago Saichen on my show and they couldn't believe it. I said, yes, well, what should I ask him? What's the most important question I should ask him? And a lot of people said, oh, ask him about the economy and about politics. But one of my dear friends, and I like this, well, I want to end with this. Uh, she said, Alison, the most important thing most people want to know is, why does he always wear a bow tie? Ah. <laughs> Why? And I thought, you know what, Aggie, I'm, I will ask him that. You know, just sometimes I would think in Mongolia, let, let the people think that in Mongolia some guys even have a bow tie. <laughs> you look very British. Uh, British? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Not American. No, no, I All think right, you look okay. rather British. <laughs> I, I like it. So you just, you do it because you, you like them. Uh, well, UK this is, uh, it's a, with, in, in many ways, this is the language-wise, I mean, even your country, Australia, start from, your people start from the uh, UK, mm -hmm. or Americans, many. Now, why the language is English? Mm -hmm. And I think English, English literature, mm -hmm. English schools, well, in, in a lot of way, leading the spiritual, intellectual life in the world. Mm -hmm. And we should thank for that. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. It's a, Without English, which language would we talk? Yes. With you, for example, yeah. right? Though you are learning very well Mongolian. So I'm trying. Congratulations. I, thank you. I really struggle, but I am, I am trying. No, I, I like your enthusiasm, so. Yeah, well, I do love this country. Good job. Thank you. Now, this is a little present I got for you the other day. Uh, I want you to just open it. It's, thank you. Yeah, it, very it's kind a pleasure. You. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's for your collection. Cheers, huh? It's a bow tie. Thank you. Thank it's you very tartan. Much. <laughs> so I, I hope, thank I you, hope very much. You, you wear it. Thank, thank you, you Jarko. Thank you. So good to see you. And that's all today, viewers on Talk With Me. Thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you next week. But for now, bye, stay in that old sea.